Hello and welcome to PostgreSQL, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I'm Michael, founder of PG Mustard. This is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hey Nikolai, what are we talking about today? Hi Michael, uh, is it your choice or mine? Oh, is it boring or not? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. It's mine, right? So it should not yeah. be boring. For some folks, it might sound boring, very boring, because we are going to talk about uh, PSQL, PSQL. Mm-hmm. Uh, command line versus UI versus GUI and uh, f- f- some people think it's very very boring to work in terminal very like pff, hacky, boring uh, 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 inconvenient in my experience and in my opinion this is super cool tool I use it a lot it's not boring at all it's super flexible powerful it lacks something still we will probably will talk about it, but I, I find this topic not boring at all. So yeah, so there's PSQL itself as the com- like the default command line interface for Postgres ships with Postgres, awesome tool. Um, but there's also the higher level discussion of command line interfaces versus graphical user interfaces to work with databases in this context, right? Yeah, specifically for po- I, I was going to say even go as narrow as just to- talking about the ones that work with Postgres. Right. So PSQL is a common line tool. It's a client program, right? Mm-hmm. Client program inter- working in terminal. And uh, it's installed usually in Ubuntu, for example, you install client package, uh, PostgreSQL client. Uh, I would like to mention that there is there are more uh, client programs uh, uh, standard shipped with uh, Postgres distribution. For example, uh, PG Dump, right? It's P- yeah. PG Restore or pgbench, but yep, in Ubuntu, perfect. somehow pgbench goes to server package. Yeah, it's oh, interesting. It's strange. Sometimes we, for example, sometimes we, we have uh, older database installed and we want newer uh, client tools because there is a backward compatibility. We know that newer client tools can perfectly work usually uh, with older database. So, and they have some features. For example, pgbench has, has some feature or psql has some feature. And we are trying to install client. It will be fine for psql, pgdump, pgrestore. It won't be fine for pgbench. For pgbench, you need to install server package for newer version, which is strange. Just a side note. That's a really good starting point, though, because it is worth noting that sometimes these client features, then then they seem like new features in a new version of Postgres, but actually they can work on older versions. So that's, that's in many cases. Really cool. So right. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, not always. Because they work usually on at meta level. For example, like we we can, for for example, on Postgres TV with Andre Baradin, we are trying to extend backslash watch, uh, psql comment. Mm-hmm. to add more options to it. Uh, it. It accepts only one option. The, uh, it, it runs some query in, lo- in a loop, in an infinite loop. And originally it accepts only one option, the uh, sleep time between loops. So we wanted to, to add another option, how many loops we want. For example, I don't want to be at infinite, I want like only mm-hmm. a thousand uh, iterations, uh, each one with sleep one second. And eventually we decided to extend, to think about a more extendable approach, like more options in general, with name equals something. It's like, it's not, uh, it, it, it's it's being discussed in PGSQL hackers mailing list, but uh, it's it's good um, that you can extend PSQL also like, right? And uh, I forgot all, I, what I wanted to say. You need to remove this part. Sorry. Should we go? Let's no trouble. Uh, should we go back to kind of? I'm thinking of it sometimes from a beginner angle and sometimes from like the advanced user angle. I, I see a lot of advanced users in love with PSQL or PSQL. Um, I think Letitia's doing. There's... Letitia did a really good talk on yeah. Postgres TV uh, and uh, and has done it at several conferences. Huge number uh, of it, uh, of tips on that website. PSQL tips. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. She also has that website with. Um, I think you can you can have it load a random tip, or you can go through them one by one. But yeah, well over a hundred now that she's got listed there, and that's kind of both great and also the the issue with PSQL. I think it's so powerful; it can do so much. 
But it's also quite intimidating as a new user, I think, or for beginners to know what's even possible. So is there, like, where would you recommend getting started for somebody? I would recommend getting started with a Linux terminal. (laughs) Learning Tmux and VI. Yeah. Maybe not VI, but Tmux uh, definitely, because you don't want, if you're disconnected, uh, you're doing something on server or in some infrastructure if even if it's rds and you're working from some uh, machine it should be closer to rds and it should not be uh, should not be dependent on your connectivity and so on right so if your home internet like mine very often is not good tmax saves you this is where you i think everyone should start and uh, learn some basics of uh, these great tools tmax and vi uh, and then uh, just s- consider one particular reason why everyone should use psql at least from time to time this reason is predict- predictability and repeatability of your steps if you do something in ui <laughs> try to do it once again you might be you might click different button and that's it you cannot program it at input to git well there are tools for UI programming, like uh, recorders. I remember 20 plus years ago, there was a a rational robot or something. I don't like many things created, Selenium and so on. But in when you work in terminal, it's natural for you to code it in in form of script and share with colleagues. These are my steps to be to repeat them to be very predictable, testable and so on deployable. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good reason. The other and two more good reasons. One is it's installed everywhere. You're going to have Postgres. There's, you're going to be able to have access to PSQL. I think that's a really good reason. And then another one is not just predictable but reliable. It's the most reliable interface I've ever seen to Postgres. So I've right. seen a lot of GUIs have weird bugs or like every now and again. Trustworthy, I would say. Trust, Trust. exactly. Mm-hmm. So. Quite often in a Postgres community, you might see somebody see, seeing some weird behavior, and one of the first questions people ask is, "Can you get? Do you get that exact same behavior when you run the query in PSQL? And if you don't, it's a problem at the editor level. Like there's something going on in between, um, right. or the interface level. We can claim that PSQL is Postgres. All UIs are not Postgres. Postgres doesn't have UI. Yeah, so PSQL, I think the code is held to the same standard as the Postgres code base, which is right. a very high standard. Right. Yeah. Unlike any UI, Postgres itself doesn't have any UI. And PG admin, some people confuse it with like considering it as a standard UI for Postgres, but it, it's, it is advertised on PostgreSQL.org website. But it has it's a different product. It, it's not shipped with Postgres. It has different release process, release cycle, a different team, and so on. It's basically under uh, Enterprise DB. EDB yes. is, is working on it. Single I can company. See, mm-hmm. I can see where the confusion comes from, though, because if you install one of like Postgres via one of the like EDB-maintained installers, like the Windows installer or the Mac installer that they that they host, I think, on Postgres.org or PostgresQL.org, it does come with PG admin, and I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. So it's understandable, but it is worth, uh, in case you didn't know, it's worth noting that it, it isn't official. And equally, it doesn't have as high a market share. Like when I looked into, yeah. so my background is in is in GUI tools. Yeah, exactly. I, I was hoping when I came to the Postgres world to be able to make an extension to a popular editor. So uh to make a tool for a popular editor interesting coming from coming from the sql server world or the oracle world where quite a few editors and even my mysql where quite a few editors at the time had you know tens of percent of market share in the postgres ecosystem that just isn't the case a lot of people are using clis a lot of people are using a vast array of different uh, guis so it's it's much more difficult to pick or you'd have to build something that would work with it's open lots. source bazaar you know it's not cathedral in this case, but, even, but I, I even wish Postgres had editors. standard UI. I wish it had it. Yeah, it, it could be cool, but I'd also I do understand why they don't. I think it's a, but I do think it's a challenge for the ecosystem that, uh, that there isn't one. When or, some or, UI, sorry for interrupting, but when some no. UI, I experienced it m- many times in my own uh, projects. When UI is added, it quickly becomes more than fifty percent of everything. 
of development of code base of uh, issues uh, ta goals tasks everything so it, it can be much bigger than pro uh, than engine itself so so because and it's very different different because uh, maybe not all will use it well still i think postgres needs ui standard ui it's it's my own opinion i i see how things are right now and i have like i think it's very very low chance that it will be changed Yes, PG admin is something I never used and don't recommend to anyone. I reevaluate it every couple of years and consider it's going the wrong direction, having like problem since birth, like the new PG admin working in browser and so on. Like nice idea, but implementation I consider is very poor and cannot recommend to anyone. If someone wants uh, UI, it's better to consider Postico on Mac or DBWare or Cloud Beaver anywhere, or the tool from JetBrains, how's it called? Data Grip, right? Data Grip, yeah. These tools are much better, much better. Yeah, I have heard that pgadmin4 is the online version, uh, or the sorry, the web-based uh, technology version. I have heard it's been getting better in later versions, but I do still come across quite a few people that have uh, issues, uh, and it's, like. From what I saw, you cannot improve it. You need to destroy it and start from scratch, and probably with different approaches. Like, I can be specific, but we need to open screen sharing, and I will show you the yeah. details. For example, you cannot query Postgres all the time in loop. Maybe they fixed it, I don't know, but it's so wrong idea to query my Postgres all the ti in time in loop to deliver some monitoring information, which I don't need at all. I want to disable it, but I don't need to do like i just want to send my queries yeah. don't don't spam my postgres right yeah and there are tons of alternatives i meant i said that in in passing but you mentioned some great ones there um db versus especially db Beaver maybe is the leading alternative well yeah data grip definitely has some benefits a db for i hear a lot of people that work with geo data uh, love it for the visualizations and that's one of the one of the maybe the main reasons to use a graphical tool is if you if you're looking at things visually uh, but there are i wanted to give a shout out to some others my personal favorite and this is actually an admission i should probably have made up the top of the episode i actually tend to use a gui for working with postgres i don't do that much Why? with postgres partly because i don't do that much with it um day to day like i'm working on a on a i'm working on a product for Postgres, not necessarily doing Postgres stuff all day. But um, also when I, I'm, sometimes what I'm doing is trying to show people how to do things. And sometimes that is easier where what they're, with what they're currently using. So my personal favorite at the moment is Postico that you mentioned, very fast to open, very reliable, but it is Mac only. There's loads of others, like Table Plus is really popular. I've got um, OmniDB was popular, but it's been revived recently by Command Prompt. I think they've called it uh, PG Manage. Um, there's loads of online uh, alternatives now. Like there's some cool ones like Popsicle. Um, that's how I think you pronounce it, Pop SQL. And then, sadly, Archtype got acquired. That that was looking promising. The Beaver yeah, has Cloud Beaver version, yeah. Like which, yeah, it's also interesting. I, I, you know what I use more and more. I like for me. I like to do everything in the browser. Like I'm, I'm a very strange person probably. I like terminals and I, I like everything in the browser. And this is very strange, but I know it, but still this is my two like maybe conflicting uh, goals. But I, I find myself using PSQL quite often in the browser. <laughs> using you know, like connecting to some virtual machine, uh, both AWS and GCP allows it. And, and when I run PSQL, they're in Tmax. So if I disconnect, I can continue. And that's it. It's version I want, everything as I, as I want, and so on and so on. So, so I, I, I tend to use uh, CLI just because of the reasons I mentioned. I want predictability, and I don't like to use mouse at all or trackpad and so on and so on. But I, I, I understand the people who like UI. I understand this yeah. because if you do it not, not every day, it's easier to understand what to do because it has some menus and you can choose what to do and so on and so on. Copy paste easier and so on. Yeah, exactly. And the, on the command line front, though, it's, it's, yeah, it's awesome being able to do stuff in the browser or in, in even various apps like Google Cloud, for example. If if I'm on my mobile, I don't have my laptop with me and I'd need to do something. 
it's really cool that I can. Um, but if you, so I think it is good to get, even if you are a GUI user, it's good to get comfortable enough with the CLI so that in an emergency or so if you, you don't if use CLI on mobile phone. No, no, I do. So oh. yeah. What, what is that? CLI what you meant? terminal. Yeah. Uh, SSH to some somewhere from phone. I, well, I do it all via the, time. the Yeah, exactly. So um, that's what I mean. I think it's useful to be familiar with the CLI for that yeah. purpose. Like if, if in an emergency you have to, um, having at least some level of confidence there, but for for everyday use, I don't tend to. Anyway, should we go back to the kind PS of the code? basics? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, it, it allows you to work in an interactive mode and also to work in like uh, some fully scripted uh, mode, uh, taking data from files, right? It's, yep. it's, it's super good because uh, you can put those files to Git and then to execute them using psql in a uh, reliable form. One of the terrible mistake uh, you can make here, and I did it. Uh, you can, for example, forget, for, for example, you analyze the output of psql somehow in, in some shell scripting, it don't, doesn't matter. And you expect some form of output, but uh, then on server you might have dot uh, psql rc file for example people like to, to to change prompt or to set timing on or something like that right and if your script doesn't expect it it can fail i had an ansible playbook which failed during only on production because all lower environments d didn't have uh, psql rc but on one of servers on production someone put psql rc since then I always use use dash capital X, which says ignore PSQL RC. So any scripted approach should include dash capital X. That's a great tip. Yeah, just skip uh, custom settings and start from default settings and that's it. That takes us to something else though. Have you ever shared, so it's cool that you can customize that, um, that that config have you ever shared your setup or know any good places where people I, yeah, can yeah i tried to uh, yeah i try I, I remember i tried back in times to i grabbed uh, setups for tmax vi and also then started psql and started to maintain it and then i ended up to use to work with defaults for example in tmax i originally worked with non default uh, control a as a control uh, key when you do something in tmax then i switched to defaults because sometimes you work with uh, servers uh, clients have and you don't have time to set it up properly yeah. with psql it's the same for me because i usually don't connect psql remotely to some distant machine yeah. i work on from machine which is close to it in the infrastructure like it can be production infrastructure and there i don't have time to set it up unfortunately uh, but in some cases i connect uh, through ssh tunnel ssh port forwarding it, sometimes it happens. In this case, I, I have something on my machine, but it's not uh, some big PSQL RC. Instead, I have a project called Postgres DBA on GitHub, which uh, provides interactive menu inside PSQL. Did you see it or no? I've seen you share something else, the PSPG pager. Is that is that what you're no, no, mentioning? No. Oh, that's okay. great tool, a great addition. Yeah. I, I, when I have opportunity to customize PSQL, I always use PSPG. It's easy to install it from on, on Brew, on Apt, like everywhere packages have on all popular platforms. It's developed by Pavel Stechul. Um, I might pronounce it wrong. Sorry, from Czech Republic, and uh, yeah. it's great. I follow it. All. I like the, that the way it like it it replaces less. So if you have a white table, you can scroll horizontally inside your terminal, vertically, horizontally. You can, like in, similarly to Google Spreadsheets, you can freeze first couple of columns. So it's interesting. And then you can switch it off temporarily, switch back, it's, everything works. And also colorful themes, you can adjust, uh, many things. So I, I, th I think it's a must have to, for those people who, who can afford it, like w working on with customized psql and who spend a lot of time like myself in psql but i'm talking about something else for uh, quick analysis of health i have postgres dba package which is a, a, a set of scripts 
uh, SQL scripts, and it provides you a menu. So you type uh, colon DBA and see a menu in PSQL. It can and can choose from menu. Like for example, zero is some uh, basic cluster information. B1 is uh, heap bloat estimate analysis. B2 is index bloat estimate analysis. We've preformat like quite good formatted for PSQL with some understanding that I'm, we live in console. So, yeah, it even has uh, column tetris analysis, you know, this uh, pe alignment padding, padding alignment problem yeah. when when we want to reorder columns and save some space. It also has this, this report. And uh, it exists for several years on GitHub. Some people use it, I know. It's convenient. Sometimes quickly check the help of this node you connected to. But you need to have it on your machine, so you need to install it additionally. Yeah. yeah. In terms of beginner things, I uh, I think the this website you talked about from Letitia is, is great for people to discover new things that you can do with PSQL. The other place I would recommend going is the Postgres docs. There's re there's yeah. just a, a whole host of those um, back what would you call them, backslash commands of the different yeah, things? I would can... recommend remembering, memorizing only backslash yeah. uh, uh, question mark. Backslash yeah. for, question for help, mark. right? For help on psql commands. Of the, all psql commands start with backslash and uh, I don't remember all of them all. I always check them, always. And also but then... then there are... yeah. Just to give people an idea of the kinds of things they can do, the ones that I see people most commonly using are things like to get the schema of a table or to see all the indexes in a table. Like you can do, there's whole hosts of these queries that are quite complex to write in terms of the cat, like PG, like the Postgres catalog data, but they right. vastly simplify those so you can quickly quickly do them. And you also can learn, even if you are not heavy PSQL user, you can learn how to deal with catalogs if you enable, there is like some like echo, hidden, yeah. I don't remember, hidden something. You can en enable, it's easy to find, uh, but you can enable um, printing a SQL that is behind those comments. So when you say backslash D plus some table, you can see how PSQL uh, collected that info from Postgres. So you can repeat it in your program, for example, if you need it. Also, a good tip here, if if you forgot some function, standard or your custom function, for example, I always forget uh, how to check uh, like re last replay LSN, last, last replay commit. I, I use it all the time, many years, I always forget. And I don't need to, f to remember it because I what I do usually, backslash df means, means describe functions, uh, asterisk, LSN asterisk, and I see all the functions. So I have a mask, uh, like kind of simple regex search, and I see all functions that have LSN or timestamp, and I choose. That's it. Like simple. Right? Yeah, very cool. And also, so backslash uh, uh, question mark. It's to see all comments that uh, PSQL supports, but also there is important different thing backslash H, which uh, is a help uh, tool for uh, SQL itself. For example, you oh, forgot cool. syntax. You forgot syntax for delete command, for example. It's maybe one of the easiest commands, but you forgot, right? You can write uh, backslash h delete and see it. So you see like synopsis, you understand how, uh, which keywords to use and which in which order and so on. So backslash question mark help for psql itself see all the commands that are possible backslash h is help for secret right. Nice. right these are two main important most important backslash comments you need to remember all others you will find from there yeah i like it um move like i know there's lots we could talk about for pc core um variables but, <laughs> oh yeah yeah we i mean i've even i've used variables right the yeah, explain analyze syntax yeah. is quite uh yeah. it's quite long so that can be um could be really helpful. Right. So, uh, so you, yes, you can. You can. You can define. Do you define that in your piece of glass C or just on the fly as you're going? You can do a lot of things. If you look uh, at, at inside my Postgres DBA project, you will find interesting things. For example, uh, backslash if, backslash else, 
variables and so on and so on like many things it's basically like some kind of macro language you can script uh, in, so you can do scripts for psql i usually when i write a script for psql itself i i create a file dot psql something dot psql and uh, this is how i understand not just it's not just psql it's something else it's of course it's a combination of regular sql and, and psql right nice yeah. We need to remember context in Postgres. I had a problem yesterday. I worked with a PLPGSQL function and it had uh, select something into variable. And vari like you can select something from table into variable. You declare variable in the declare section. And then I, I wanted to repeat the, ste the same steps in PSQL. So I started to copy paste uh, one query after another, and I, I copy paste it as, as is. Select something into some, into variable name. Guess what happened? It worked. Although, yeah, it worked. First, my okay. thought was: Is it inserting result to PSQL variable? No, it it was not. It was not related to PSQL. It was related to regular SQL uh, Postgres version of SQL. Postgres dialect of SQL. You can select something into blah blah. Like and this blah blah table or? it creates a table. It's a DDL comment. Yeah. Wow. Wait, it it's, creates it's a permanent table or a temporary table. Permanent. It's like create table wow. and select. It starts with select, ends with into something, and it's cre it creates a table. It it exists from from nineties, so it's very old. I would remove it actually. <laughs> it's dangerous. Is it SQL standard? I'm guessing, or is it post? In SQL standard? standard, so in PLPG scale, it's DML. It's data modification language. We just yeah, okay. select something, we memorize it in, in variable re of type of record, for example, and uh, all good. In uh, Postgres SQL context, including in PSQL with, without any anonymous do blocks and so, on, it's GDL. It creates a table. Second attempt will fail, saying the table exists. <laughs> In standard SQL, as Postgres documentation says, I didn't check the the uh, standard itself, but Postgres documentation says in standard SQL it's also different. It it it's used to get data and uh, store it in, in client side somehow. So it's DML again. Makes sense. <laughs> it's very very confusing uh, part of SQL. Uh, and I know when I learned about it, my final thought was, I want to unsee and forget it. And then I, a second idea was, maybe I did it already in the past. <laughs> That's why it surprises me again. So don't go there, actually. Select yeah. into is dangerous. And yeah. Use create I want table. to do, mm -hmm. yeah, I've got a whole episode on that, right? Materialized views episode. Um, the... The couple of other things I wanted to make sure we, or at least uh, get your thoughts on, were kind of the, I feel like there's a, a natural trade-off if you're either a tool maker or you're trying to choose between like w which tools to recommend to your team or which tool you should be using generally day to day. I do think there's almost like a power versus discoverability trade-off. Like generally speaking, more will be possible via the CLI, but in terms of discoverability, in terms of working out what you can even do, I think GUIs have like an advantage in uh, on that on that side. Mm. At least, well, maybe not once you've discovered uh, backslash uh, question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I need to also to learn each UI. You need to learn and remember the interface. For me, tech, uh, command line interface is easier because I need to remember some comments, and from there I can go in many directions and so on. But yeah. it's it's a matter of taste, maybe. But I would I would for serious work I would always use CLI because I, I need to automate everything. I need to put everything to Git. I need to share my actions. I need to be able to repeat them. And with UI, it's very difficult. Scripting, yes. scripting is is very important. Yeah, for sure. With some some UIs. Um, I think, like for example, the data group one, I think allows you to do a lot of stuff from like saved files. Um, but yeah, I do. Th I think they have some other advantages as well. Like I saw you were trying to get the uh, some functionality into Postgres at the like. Uh, I'm not even sure actually what level, but for example, if you did a delete or an update without a where clause, um, 
yeah a feature yeah. a feature of some graphical user interfaces is that they will prompt you and set up like send you a war like put a warning into the ui warning. before yeah. yeah so um they all- i feel like you could implement that at the cli level but it's it feels like more of a it feels like more getting in somebody's way than a gui that's there to help somebody you know what i think uh, since postgres is very extendable in it's in its philosophy i think it's a good idea i think it's not a new, new idea but I, I i'm still like revising this idea it would be great to have plugins for psql right so for example it could be a plugin that uh, reminds you like that maybe even blocks you to, to, to from sending a dangerous delete or update to postgres itself and asks for confirmation or something i don't know but uh, i also see things like for example we had a small project and it caught caught some attention on our website that will like you are in psql you run explain analyze buffers 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 always buffers and you you see the plan but also the same plan is sent to explain com or explain dalibo.com or somewhere else or pgmaster.com yeah and and then you you as a result you see in right in psql you see the link Usually, for example, in iTerm2 on my Mac, I can uh, use either control or, or command, I don't remember, and click on the link, and in my browser, I already see visualization, right? In this case, yeah, it's easier, you're like working in normal way, but sometimes you want visualization, here it is. So it could be a plugin that would work even better from your, uh, from CLI, and this could be some connection between these two worlds, right? Some plugins could implement it. Yeah, if, making it extensible would be awesome, uh, for sure. I think there's, um, I think there's an additional thing with. Oh, what would it even be? Well, so, sorry. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. One, uh, just I think I was just going to mention that there's um, there there are alternative CLI tools, right? Like the yeah, the, the only, CLI. Yes. And I think uh, it's... Um, it's certainly in Python, Irina. right? Irina. Yes, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so a Ukrainian engineer has done an excellent job maintaining that. And it, I've not used it myself, because but I've heard some people saying complete, it's Autocomplete, awesome. colorful, everything, right? So it's like more fancy tool for... for yeah, and quite okay. smart autocomplete. Quite like smarter yeah. autocomplete than I've seen in some GUI tools. So yeah, yeah really so, uh, nice tool. It's not only... Autocomplete for, like in PSQL you has have it, but you need to do, double tap do, twice uh, tab for example, double tap on tab. Uh, there it has drop downs, right, and you can choose or so. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Good. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to make sure we covered? I think that's it. Uh, of course, uh, such thing as uh, interface, it, it, it would be good to watch. But there are many things. Uh, it, there are there are there is a number of good videos on YouTube, for example, some presentations. We can collect some ideas to continue for those who are interested in our show notes. But what we try to do is to discuss principles and starting points, right? Because this is how we can help without sharing screen and so on. Yeah, I'll include links to all the visual ones that we mentioned, just so people can see the. Each of them will have screenshots on their homepage, I'm sure. Good. Th- uh, thanks to all people who share feedback. We had, again, good wave of sh- feedback on Twitter and uh, ideas. Thank you for all ideas. And thank you for listening us while you're walking your dog or running or just walking. Maybe swimming, right? Yeah, Raise your hand that. if you you are currently <laughs> swimming. Sure. I would like to know because I I also do it sometimes <laughs> with special headphones. Yeah, oh, good. Right, we'll yeah. take care, everybody. <laughs> bye, bye.